We're on our way into the King George River and we're crossing the Samba as we speak. Almost a metre. <laughs> Is that the first sandbar crossed? Well, yeah, that was probably the, the gnarliest patch. Now with Polaroid, you can see that the bar's coming down there, and we're heading in this direction, and then we're gonna dog leg back in. So it's for just this thing that I bought the rule. A lot of, uh, river crossings in North Queensland, it's the same thing. So we really benefit from having that smaller boat with a shallow draft. And not only that, with the big three-quarter keel that's integral to the hull, it's not just a bolt-on. We can't snap anything off or anything like that. And also, Klansman's careen well. So even if I laid it on its side, she would still re-float on the next tide without down flooding and sinking. So, She's small, but she's the perfect boat for exploring these sort of uh, gunk holding type rivers. You can see how shallow it is here because you can actually see the bottom, <laughs> which is pretty crazy for a Kimberley River. We, Pascal. We're at East Arm Falls, or the eastern arm of the King George River, in the freshwater area section. It's beautiful up here. Crocodile free swimming. Dilly bag. That looks like it. A kangaroo or something. Yeah, little creature. Same as down here. Oh yeah. What do you think? A little representative animal. There's another figure there and then those dots that we often see. This one's just boomerangs. Mm. These figures, the heads are a lot different. Mm. So. so, East Arm Falls, there's some nice artwork, but you've got to be prepared to do a bit of this to get to it. <laughs> I give you the amazing Pascal. I made it. How's the warranty going on your rock climbing shoes? Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Out here, we've got some. So these are later kangaroos. But you can see up above them, small figures with spears that are really old. Then kangaroos, this one's a bit more of a simple one. Then other stuff drawn over it later. This looks like an imitation of the other Bradshaws that we've seen. 
doesn't it? Like it's yeah. it's not quite the it's same, but someone's had there. a bit of a go There's at it. One there. Yeah. This one's interesting. In this cave I found a, a lump of spinifex resin that's been accumulated by insects and it's super fragrant but um, if, I, if I was in need or the people that used to be here before uh, didn't have access to modern resources you can melt this down in, uh, in water and then use this as a glue and then when it sets it'll hold spearheads, um, points on your spear thrower, things like that. Anywhere you need some glue, this is a great source. The in insects have accumulated this. So if I was coming through here a thousand years ago or even a couple hundred, break that off and save that later. Okay, anything that needs to be glued on. At the moment I might just grab a little bit of it anyway just because it smells so good. That spinifex really smells great, and even if the plant itself is so hostile. Now, I said before that I got some of that spinifex resin in the cave, and it smells really good. Well, I've gone and rubbed a bit on my cheek, so we're going to test it. <laughs> Drives women wild. <laughs> so, get to the Kimberley, get yourself some spinifex resin be beating him off with a stick. Or at least best. Here we are, that's one way of getting water in the Kimberleys, just park your boat under a waterfall and go for it. Pascal's got the good job on this one, she gets a nice cool refreshing shower while I'm stuck back here driving the boat and making sure that we're just nicely balanced on that pinky. Seems to be working. Luckily this, uh, this boat's only insured for third party, otherwise anyone that might see this that was my insurer would just be like, what? But uh, it's all good. We've got a bit of a cunning ploy here. We've put the autopilot on while she's in gear and we've got the gain super high. 
suppose she's really responsive and that means I'll be able to just get away from the till. It's just forward in idle. Um, that means I'll be able to go forward and have a bit of a shower as well. We've put the anchor down at the base of the falls and everything went pretty smoothly and we're washed and clean which is exciting. We're glad that the falls are flowing so late in the season. It's not always the case so we've been pretty lucky. And the anchor locker got a good clean out from the shower. That's Troy just emptying it out there. We've made it Dal. We've made it. Look at your fluffy hair. That's yeah. super fresh water being washed. Yeah. <sighs> with the passage of this broad trough over the Kimberleys, been left with a little bit of a misty morning. All right, here we are at the start of the Twin Falls walk. Um, we're not breaking any new ground. This walk's been done before. There's a number of cans here to follow, but it's still pretty rough country. If you look up behind us, that's, what we'll, be, that's what we'll be pushing our way through. Lucky. But I'm sure the view will be worth it. Mm. Speaking of views, uh, there she is, <laughs> Pascal. All right, well, enough, uh, enough chat. We've got a walk ahead of us. A bit of exercise for this early in the morning. I wouldn't really call this a walk, I call it a climb. Scramble? Does it make a scramble? Yeah, scramble slash climb. How are you enjoying this leisurely walk, Pascal? Um, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it leisurely. It's not leisurely. <sighs> no. Well, we got high already. We're kind of setting the pace pretty fast, Troy. Are you panting into the camera? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Three quarters of the way up this walk, there's an old box. So folklore for this region has it that a yachty was coming through and he's having never ending problems. So he trapped a gremlin that was aboard his yacht, put it in a box and stashed it up here. And now visiting yachties come by and leave Stuff. gifts to keep yeah. the gremlin satisfied in its home. Mm. The original box was victim of a bushfire here, but um, just to keep the folklore going, subsequent yachties have replaced the box and continue to uh, patronise it. So it's quite interesting to just rummage around and see what people have left there and... Bandages. Bandages for the gremlin. And there's, there's, there's signs hearts. left by other yachts and that's Socks. kind of entertaining. Oh, look at that dirty sock. That'll keep, that'll keep the gremlin happy. Oh. Lighters. A big lighter. A gremlin would probably break that. No, he hasn't yet. Busted sunglasses. Nice. I'm always amazed by these Kimberley tea trees. They look just like just a dead stick. And incidentally, it's really good firewood. But then if you follow it all the way along, there's a burst of green showing there's still life in there. And both of those. The resins in these, really flammable. And they smell great, incidentally. So. We've made it to the top of the falls and we're just admiring the view. Hmm. Mm. And we've seen a hammerhead shark. Yeah, that hammerhead was really nice. Well, I guess despite just travelling around the yacht and doing our own thing, we're just tourists at heart. So here it is, a selfie at the top of a, 
a national treasure. <laughs> Marul's down there taking pride of place in the middle of the harbour and she's covered in nice clean laundry, isn't she? Mm. So we took advantage of the fresh water yesterday. So she looks majestic from here. In our summer wet season, this area here would have a flow of hundreds of tons of water a second. And now she's a very languid little pool. So we've really got dramatic seasons here in the Kimberleys. So there's a little bit of a view from the top where we came in with the with the main boat and filled up our tanks and the jerry cans, had a bit of a shower. Bathroom with a rainbow. We've had our little bath and a swim and everything else like that. And now we're going back down there. So whenever we do these walks, we sort of act like a little bit like geriatrics. We take it really easy and if we think we're going to end up on our bums, we start there and we sit down and make our way down. Um, closer to civilization, we might be a bit more cavalier and just sort of charge at it. But out here, that's no. That's really bad because a twisted ankle here would just be really grim. So we're just going to make like we're 80 years old <laughs> and just really just casually take it, take it easy down here. Once again, we did the old dinghy trick. The pinky's got a kelic dropped in deep water. It's really rocky shore, so we didn't didn't want to risk our anchor. The green line's the messenger, and comes back to our anchor on shore. Anchorage at the base of the Twin Falls this morning and we're going to head back to the waterfall and fill up our jerry cans again and have another water party, have a shower. It's getting pretty hot already, it's about 9 o'clock and I'm sweating so it's going to be nice and refreshing. Just edge around now. Some boats will go a predictable way with the propeller. Marul doesn't because of her keel. She only backs up into the wind, which is coming from this direction. So we'll back out of here. We should go around. Well, there we go. Even though she's a right hand prop, she's reversing with her bum going to starboard into the wind. Normally, a right hand prop, if you go in reverse, the back will want to go that way. It's like a paddle wheel on a boat. The propeller will be spinning that way and dragging the bum that way. Marul's a bit different. But knowing that she always backs up into the wind, it's predictable. It's all about setting things up, thinking things through, and then sort of going to a plan but always having a plan B. If things go wrong, which they do, um, then what are you going to do? That's why we've got the dinghy alongside. What happens if we have a mechanical failure on the main engine? Jump in the dinghy, turn the outboard on. That's it. Pull her out. I was 
kind of hoping that a tourist boat would come. Yeah, that'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? But yeah. We've had yeah. the river to ourselves apart from what, one helicopter and one other yachty. For two days. For two days. But the first day we were here, there was loads of ribs. And when we first got here, there was a massive cruise ship, so. I think we just really just timed, timed it. it. I think what's happening is the spring tides are happening. You don't need the spring tides for King George, so they came here, run around in the neeps, in the low tides, and then they're going to use the springs to get into some of those more difficult rivers further south. Yeah. Good for us. <laughs> <laughs>